Let's talk about equilibrium potentials. Equilibrium potentials are the charge at which an ion or chemical ceases to move down their chemical gradients because the charge on the opposite side of that membrane is repelling the movement of that chemical or ion. So specifically, we're going to talk about sodium and potassium. In short, sodium's equilibrium potential, the cell gets too positive inside the cell for sodium to want to enter the cell anymore. And for potassium, the interior of the cell gets so negative that potassium no longer wants to leave any longer. So we'll take a look at that. My name is Matt Halter. It's Saturday, June 26, I believe. Beautiful sunny day in Santa Cruz. This is for the Bio 5 class at Cabrillo College. But if you're not in that class, that's okay, because this is on YouTube, and you can learn with us. Okay, so positive 60 millivolts is the equilibrium potential for sodium. So let's take a look at this. Here's sodium, as we normally see it. This is a resting cell at negative 70 millivolts. Sodium has an electrochemical gradient. That is to say, the positive charge on sodium is attracted to the negative of the interior of the cell. In this case, it's negative 70 millivolts. That's its electrical gradient. But it certainly has a chemical gradient. That is to say, there's a much higher concentration of sodium outside the cell than inside the cell. As sodium starts moving into the cell, the cell starts becoming more positive. Certainly, I could have gradually shown this from negative 70 to negative 60 to negative 50, so on and so forth. And just so we're clear, negative 60, while it sounds pretty negative, which it is, it is more positive or less negative than negative 70. And that may sound intuitive to you as I tell you, but it's not crystal clear to a lot of us when we're first looking at these numbers. But as sodium moves into the cell, the cell becomes progressively more positive. As we can see in this cell, sodium is continually coming down its chemical gradient. We're now at positive 30 millivolts. Now, if we back up here, and that should sit, this should say positive 10 right here because we're positive in the cell, we no longer, or I should say, sodium no longer has that electrical gradient. That is to say, sodium is moving against its electrical gradient because positive charges don't really want to be around other positive charges. And since the interior of the cell is now positive, it's moving against its electrical gradient. But because sodium's gradient is so large, chemical gradient, I should say, it disregards the fact that it's positive within the, within the interior of the cell. We continue to see that right here where we're now at positive 30 millivolts and sodium is continually coming into the cell. Now, if we look at the action potential graph, Sodium does stop coming in at positive 30, but not because it's reached its equilibrium potential. Sodium start, stops coming in at positive 30 because the sodium gates close. And sodium is no longer given the opportunity continu to continue moving into the cell. If sodium was continually given the opportunity, that is to say if those gates remained open, it would continue coming in at positive 40 millivolts, at positive 50 millivolts. But once that cell were to reach positive 60 millivolts, which I need to say it never does because the gates close at positive 30. But if the opportunity was there for that cell to depolarize all the way up to positive 60, the gates remain open, sodium would no longer enter the cell because it's become so positive in the interior of the cell that repels sodium. That is sodium's equilibrium potential at positive 60. It's the voltage at which sodium decides, I am no longer going into the cell, even though I still have a huge chemical gradient favoring me to move into the cell or favoring sodium to move into the cell. Let's talk about potassium's equilibrium potential, which is negative 90 millivolts. Right here, what we can see is we have a depolarized cell. So keep in mind when we look at the peak of this action potential graph that 
it depolarizes up to positive 30, and that's when repolarization starts. And repolarization is due to the efflux of the potassium ion out of the cell. So theoretically, that's starting around positive 30. Personally, I probably believe that potassium starts leaving the cell much sooner than that. But to keep things a bit simple here, let's just suggest that potassium starts leaving at positive 30. Hence, that's why I have positive 30 written right here. In this case, and this is what we've always suggested in a resting cell when it's negative on the inside and positive on the outside, potassium only has a chemical gradient favoring it to leave the cell. We've always suggested that potassium is going against its electrical gradient. That is to say, the positive charge of potassium doesn't want to be around the positive charges on the exterior of the cell. But potassium's chemical gradient is so large, it disregards that and leaves the cell to start repolarizing the cells. We see that at positive 10. Now keep in mind, we just went from positive 30 to positive 10. That is getting less positive or going in the direction of becoming negative, going back to the resting state of negative 70. Here we are, we're down in the negative territory now. Potassium is still leaving the cell because it has a huge chemical gradient. Channels are open and available to allow potassium to leave the cell and it is still going against its electrical gradient. Now we get down to negative 70. That's the resting state of the cell. And this is interesting. Potassium will still leave the cell because the potassium gates are not yet closed. As long as the potassium gates are open, potassium is gonna leave the cell, move against its electrical gradient, but still down its chemical gradients. Now that we get to negative 90, which is potassium's equilibrium potential, it's so negative within the interior of the cell, and one could suggest it's super positive on the exterior, but let's just focus negativity on the interior of the cell. That is going to entice potassium to stay in the cell because it is so attracted to that negative charge within the cell that it is going to disregard its chemical gradient and stop leaving the cell. So potassium's equilibrium potential is negative 90 millivolts. In review, sodium's equilibrium potential is positive 60. That's the point at which sodium will no longer move into the cell down its chemical gradient. Potassium's equilibrium potential is negative 90. That's the point at which potassium will no longer leave the cell down its chemical gradient. One thing I want to point out is that as a cell is depolarizing, one may think that we start to lose chemical gradients, say with sodium. As sodium moves into the cell, the cell starts depolarizing. It takes very little sodium to move into the, into the cell to depolarize it up to positive 30. And the best analogy I've ever read is think of yourself on the beach and all the quartz granules that make up the sand are sodium ions. How many of those quartz granules or sand, little specks of sand, is it are required to go into your eye to irritate your eye? Generally, the answer is one. If you're really tough, maybe two. And it's the same idea with these ions. It doesn't take much sodium to move into the cell to depolarize it up to positive 30. And as a result, we don't really lose, or let me rephrase this, we don't lose the sodium chemical gradient due to one depolarization event or two or three. So keep in mind, sodium never reaches its equilibrium potential because at positive 30, the sodium gates close. Sodium is not given the opportunity to reach its equilibrium potential at positive 60. Whereas potassium, it does reach its equilibrium potential. And we, when we look at the action potential graph, we see Sodium stops leaving the cell, not because of the gates are closed, but because it reaches its equilibrium potential.